I can't stand the days I wake alone. Dun 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 dun. dun. Gonna let this chance roll by, even though I hate to see you cry. You're doing fine, though I've heard. Telling you why did you go? See your eyes. Reflections in the window saying, I told you so. Won't bring you back. I can't stand the days I wait alone. G'day guys, how we doing? Hello from Canada. Hey Jason, how we doing? Christmas was great. Um, I was meaning to be live, but guys, it's been awkward here in New Zealand. And the reason it's been awkward is there has been a ton of pollen going around. And so the pine trees and the grass, everything has been really tough on me because I don't do very well with it. it locks up my sinuses. And uh, the last two days, I went out, <laughs> g'day from a USA. The last two days I went out to the ridge and outdoors and immediately, bang. Tears, nose block, sinuses, everything. So in terms of doing painting at the moment, or at least for the next few days, I've started doing them uh, inside. So, oh, this is the first day inside. We're gonna see how we go. Watching the reel of you painting in the rain. <laughs> Cheers, Jason. Bit of a funny one. Um, yeah, so no funky, weird location today. Just inside because we're trying to navigate hay fever. So that is what is going on here. A couple of fun things we're doing today, though. I'm going to aim to do the portrait. So second to last coat on the portrait of the gentleman with a pouty face. Um, second to last coat on the wedding photo. And then I'm going to do a semi-frame on a picture of some flowers, just for interest's sake. And that's what we'll do, those three things. UV rays are so strong too, apparently. Yeah, probably best to actually be inside because yeah, you know, UV rays that UV rays are bonkers at the moment. Do you have a bad hair day or a grumpy day? Fat boy. I mean, everyone has days for whatever reason. But uh, bad hair day. I find if you've got a bad hair day going on, guys, just grab a hat. There is nothing wrong with a hat. Right. Here's the post. That, uh, that picture really is. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Still, the suits remain the same. You're doing fine, though I've heard. Slip that in there. Perfect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And even though I hate to see you cry. Here we go. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. Happy 2023 to you as well. Um, hello, Trina. Welcome. Thank you. Um, so this one here is getting quite thick at the moment. I think I'll move that just a little bit. Just about there. We just need that, we just need that light from the light up here onto it. A little bit, just a little bit. There we go. Beautiful. Now, key to this one now is going to be to add colours that uh, aren't the full Monty. They want to blend the colours that are already there. More whites and blacks in the colours. That'll be the trick. Hello, Lucy. Merry Christmas. Lucy, I was just uh, yarning to everyone else that uh, the reason I've disappeared for the last 72 hours is I went out to paint outside on the ridge 
outside in the garden and things, and my hay fever is just running abundant. So today I thought, nope, we'll give up on that. Let's paint inside. Um, let's not even try it, because once your eyes and nose are running, it's all over. So we're trying to avoid that. Is that your picture? It's not my picture. It's a commission of a gentleman. Mars and Swollen, yeah, they already, they already probably do a little bit. Um, so that's why I'm inside though. And that's why I've got bum, 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 antihistamine. So we're inside, we're taking antihistamines preemptively. And uh, yeah, hopefully we won't start falling to bits. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Lucy. You are onto it. That's exactly what we're going to do. 100%. <laughs> we'll bring you back. <laughs> and we're back on this fantastic photo. So, second to last coat on this one. <laughs> Cheers, Lucy. Yeah, I've already got the antihistamines. Prepared 100%. <clears throat> We're back on this gentleman, if you haven't seen the picture. That's the picture. Too much grass. It actually is the long grass that does it. That's the worst for it. Um, pine trees, not great, but uh, grass, like long, unmown grass, is brutal. And then if you want to make it a bit worse, long, unmown grass that gets freshly mown. Like it's all the pollen and it fires it in all directions. That's, that's the worst of the worst. But uh, like I say at the moment, we've gone for an indoor vibe. So we should be all right. Uh, this gentleman is a man from the States. So he's got a commission. It's a portrait. Um, it's on hardboard. So once I'm finished it, I'll put around a really thin, very subtle uh, black frame. Box it. And it'll get sent overseas and it's going to get sent on the 9th of January, 10th of January. So the man who builds the protective boxes for me, he's off until the 9th and then he's got three boxes there ready for me. Oh well, he'll have them finished on the 9th and then we'll ship this one, the bride photo and then all in a week that 10th of January, bang, done. And then the pose is hilarious. I think, uh, Jack, welcome back, good to see you. Merry Christmas and in 24 hours, Happy New Year. Um, it's a hilarious picture. I think it's really, really funny that he, uh, or it's really, um, what's the term? It's sort of, oh, I've said it before, a lot of people do portraits in a way that they will try to glorify themselves. Um, the ability to actually be self-aware have a laugh and get an interesting photo as a portrait is, um, I don't know, I really, I really like it personally. I think it's great. Use of colour is fair. Oh, thank you very much, Tina. Um, <laughs> no, it's not a serious face, Lucy. Um, he's, um, he's got a bunch of pictures and he's actually, he's a, he's a, he's a good looking fella. Um, but, and that's, that's part of the thing where this person has the opportunity to have photos direct on portrait style, big smile, perfect eye contact, etc. And he's chosen this one specifically. I think, it, I think it's self-aware, I think it's fun. Um, yeah. So anyway, with this one here, I'm gonna grab the whites, blacks, and... whites, blacks, and warmer tones, because if you look at the picture, that I showed you before, it's got a lot of oranges in it, which are currently unrealized because of the amount of pale colors we're using. So, warmer colors coming in. <laughs> Thanks, KG. Ah, uh, Cheryl, welcome. Merry Christmas, Cheryl. I hope all your Christmas dreams came true. And in 24 hours, it'll be New Year's here in New Zealand. So, that's fun. Seb, you know what I'm about to ask you. What would Lucy be about to ask me? First thing off in my head was, are you wearing shoes? And I am. These are Allbirds, and I got them from an op shop yesterday. 
13 dollars New Zealand dollars that's so like five to six American dollars so that's living the dream um, it's going well Matt welcome back how was your Christmas with your grand mum she was great everyone was good Spyro yes yes so tomorrow we've got two paintings DOS that we're starting number one is for a man named Jason it is a landscape. We've never before done a landscape on the live stream, so that'll be fun. Um, it's made exactly the same as people are, except for the landscape, because you don't have eyes and ears and a nose to sort of slowly see coming together. The landscape looks abstract for longer, and you just have to stare into that and enjoy it. That one, and then, um, depending on time, Spyro is going to start tomorrow, because I promised Lucy that I would touch on Spyro if we had time, and we're doing pretty well. Um, one more coat on this, oh, sorry, two more coats on this. Two more coats on the wedding photo. Ian's now dry. Boxes are ready on the ninth. Um, framing for that one there, yeah. So we're actually in really good shape. So when we started at the start of December, around the first and the second, we were talking about the artwork in this corner that had to get finished. Um, it's basically all finished. Framing has to get done, but the actual painting is in the right place. <laughs> Thanks Lucy. I'm actually really happy with them. They're pretty much brand new. I'm not sure why someone dropped them off. They're a perfect fit for me. Um, there's one little rip, but I'm not really that fussed. And they're really, really comfy. So, that's a win. Um, how many commissions have you finished so far? Um, at the moment, so commissions we're going on. One, two, three. Ooh, we've got one that's lagging behind a little bit, but we're on about five commissions at the moment um, <clears throat> that need to get sent off. Three of them, four of them are now done. And the fifth one, which is the three kids at the beach, that one needs some love. So we're still working on that one. It's Christmas. Wow. Lucy, yes, do it. Um, New Zealand and Australia get super, super hot around Christmas time, but I'm sure you will manage. Bring or buy sunscreen and you'll be fine. Right, I'm still need to grab a plate and because we're getting close to the final layers, we'll stop using oil paints because I've got the slow drying times and I'll start to focus on acrylics. What is this art style called? This art style is probably called Impressionism. Uh, it's like Van Gogh, very similar to Van Gogh. Um, or you could call it abstract realism, but I prefer impressionism. Same as Van Gogh. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Can you still do mine? Sorry Steve, I've got a bunch of emails sitting there in the box there at the moment. I saw you were one of them that came into the box. I will get back to you after uh, today's live session. Um, yes, there should definitely be time to do yours. Um, January is fairly crowded, but we can fit some things in, and I'm excited. Um, of course, what, a lot of these commissions should be finished um, in the next few days, and so that leaves us with an open season between the 1st and the 9th to do our landscape, to do our spyro, to do two other commissions, and Steve, I'll get in touch with you, and we'll try and slot you in there too. What do you have planned for your birthday? Lucy, I'm going to the lake. Put the paint over here. I'm going to the lake, which is like a lake in Rotorua. And the plan is to just hang out there with some good old friends, enjoy the sun, lap it up, and uh, yeah. Do you practice praying about plane jumping? Um, I assume you practice. I've only jumped out of a plane twice. So, uh, I was saying the other day on the stream that I've got a course coming up on the 7th of January. But it's not one where you, I don't think you leap out of planes non-stop. I think what they do with you is they um, give you all the ground teaching. So, how to look after a parachute, how to, I don't know, read the wind, how to... Um, pressure as you go up in the sky, like, you know, air pressure, etc. But I really, guys, I have no idea, so. Costs 200 bucks, and 
we will see. I like it. I like the two jumps, so I'm assuming that I like the course as well. But you never know. You never know. Reflections in the window saying, I told you so. We'll bring it back. Um, time for a haircut. You should get a mohawk. I'm not far off needing a haircut. That's actually 100% correct. I tried to get one prior to Christmas because I want to look nice in Christmas photos. But unfortunately, they were so packed out that there was no chance of fitting me in. So, my hair has grown wild and woolly. Um, but, 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 hopefully after New Year's sometime, the opportunity to go and get a haircut will come up. <laughs> okay, so we're going to be using, 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 sorry guys, let me just check that, Bird Sienna. Bird Sienna, Indian Yellow and Yellow Light. So these three colors are going to carry this painting to the next level and they'll work effectively because I'm going to mix them in with a bunch of acrylic medium which is going to make it more transparent. Blonde Mohawk Wow. Lucy, I've gone through a few, fair few haircuts in my life but uh, typically I suit the shorter sides so I can hear very well and a little bit of length on top that you can pull back out of your eyes. So that way if you're working outside on something bad, doing something on the farm, you can put a hat on and there's no hair anywhere. <laughs> what is that? Fireflies. Thanks, swimmers. Appreciate you. It was pretty fun, actually. I do like those animations. I think they are fun. Um, right. Clear painting medium. But this is what I was talking about. This stuff here is very cheap. It'll make your paint go further. And the reason I use clear painting medium is because once we have all these colors and these textures and this life in the painting, if we keep coming at it with more paint, we'll be covering it up. I don't want to cover up what's already there. I really like that. What I want to do is add more depth to it. And depth is easily added if you make the paint you're adding in the future transparent. Sorry if I'm losing you here, but um, if I put transparent paint on it, I can adjust the tones and the shapes to be what I want them to be without actually losing those underlying colors that we've already worked on. So that's the, that's the go. Um, when it comes to adding transparent medium to your paint, I always, and again, everything with a grain of salt, because you may know more than me, or someone else's advice may be better, but, ooh, did Shelby enjoy Christmas? Of course she did. Shelby thoroughly enjoyed Christmas. Shelby got me the most incredible Christmas gift. Um, she got me a wetsuit, which was a little bit small for me because it's not like a small man's wetsuit, but I'm like a medium man. So, but the cool thing about it was that she wants me to go surfing with her more often. So, the catch twenty-two with that is we're gonna have to juggle when we go to the beach between painting and surfing. Um, but that's all right. I think we'll strike a nice balance, guys. I don't see why we can't. Um, but figure that out. Now I'm thinking I might want a slightly bigger brush than this. This is a very small brush. This is just put it beside my thumb there. That's what we're looking at there. This might be too small. Um, I'd like. Reflections mm -hmm. and little seven. All right, that's this is again. This is probably too big, but it's all right. We'll start off with a really big one. It's at the same size as my thumb, and we'll come on down to one about the size of my. What's that? Half, third of the size of the thumb. We'll find out. What did I get her, Matt? I got her a bunch of gifts. So I like to get a whole bunch of little gifts, collect them into a gift, and call that the gift. Um, but. 
couple of the fun things I got her, thoughtful things, is she doesn't eat that well when she's at work or she just goes out to eat and stuff like that. So I got her a lunchbox because I can start making her little lunches to go to work with. Super cute. Um, and then a couple of little board games, a couple of little uh, other things. Paint and surf, what a life. Yeah. Um, well, the problem is Lucy only learned how to surf first, but, uh, but she wants me to learn. So that's the, that's the plus there. Nothing ventured, nothing again, still the suits remain the same. Will that stay there? No, it will not. Put that there. Um, I did, I did well back in the day. Um, <laughs> thanks Lucy. Um, give me just a moment guys, I'm going to come back. I need to do a little swap. I will be back in just a moment. Sorry for running away, guys. I just had to have a quick costume change because, turns out, I put those jeans through the dryer and honestly, they were a wee bit tight. And now that I'm wearing shorts, I realize how hot it was before. So, this is better. This is much better. Got to get on the train. Happy 2023, Jack. All the best. And uh, are you heading to NYC? From New York City. All right. Travel safe. Trains are amazing. I do like traveling by train. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Still the suits remain the same. I don't think I believe the word. So you'll see. When we add this on, we're not losing any of the uh, colours, shape, or anything like that when we add it, but we do change the tone. And that, that, my friends, is what we want. We want to alter that tone, see more in line with the warmth, because we want to make sure that this guy's face carries that warmth with it. Needs to have warmth to it. It's not always necessary for a portrait, but the one thing I like about adding these warmer colours to a portrait is colours, fiery colours, like your yellows, your, your deep browns and things. Oh, sorry. Amazing as the shoes stay on, I think you <laughs> Thanks, Lucy. Yes, that's, uh, 
it's a big one. Um, yes, indeed. Um, I add these warmer colours, like these ones that you see here, because I think it sort of adds a light to the painting. We, it just adds uh, energy to it. The colder colours are great. They can, um, yeah, I find there's more depth in the colder colours, but what you don't get from the colder colours is a vibrant feeling of life. And I think for a portrait to really, in a cheesy way, come to life, you need to use those colours. So, um, I don't know who David Dorchonvi is, but he sounds like a great guy. How long have I been working on this piece, Sam? Um, I'm not quite sure now. I'd need to have a look at the streams. But uh, we've got framing and we've got another possibly... I mean, I'd just be guessing. I reckon maybe another... This will be the second glass layer, I reckon. But it depends on how the layer falls. It really all depends on how the layer falls. I can talk about this all I want and then when it when the hammer actually meets the anvil, I'll be like, oh, we'll do another ladder. Oh, we'll do another ladder. So, so if I, it's probably around the five hour mark. Is it five hours, guys? I don't know. Because anyone who's been here for most of the moments will know. I want to get this yellow in the background. That background wants to be so vibrant before we're finished with it. it. wants to be absolutely teeming with life. It wants to be the sort of background that, uh, yeah. This wants to be the sort of background that, similar to the Ian, Ian picture, we want to capture a lot of color. Boom! Really halo the face. Um, my birthday is soon. My birthday is on the 12th of January. 12th of January, so. I'm turning 30, the big 3-0. So that'll be fun. Thank you for sharing your beautiful, oh, thank you very much, Seth. Much appreciated and happy 2023 and Merry Christmas. This is just soda water, by the way, guys. It's like, uh, sometimes I don't feel like a bit of water, but I do like soda water. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Still, the suits remain the same. Moving on to some uh, dark brown sienna. Dark brown sienna. The one thing that will happen with this transparent paint, though, guys, is that it will have a hard time managing itself over textures. So, if you put a lot of texture on the canvas, your transparent paints will struggle. Not a lot, just a wee bit, just a wee bit. Um, how often do you have to restock all the paint? Uh, often, often. Um, I actually had a restock the day before Christmas because I went into a art store, art store, I went to where our stationery, and um, they, had a 50% off sale on paint. And I thought, oh well. So I bought up B. Um, normally I just buy the amount of paint that I need to do the next few canvases. I don't like to overstock. But in this case, 50% off all paint. I thought, ah, buy up brushes, buy up paint. Clark, a landscape is on the way. But that's not gonna be today. But we have a landscape painting of a castle, a lake, some grassy areas going to Jason, and we're starting Jason's painting probably tomorrow morning, which would be fantastic. Um, it's A1, so I need to check. It's A1 or A2, I think it's A1. A1 size, and it's a landscape picture, but it's portrait shape, so that'll be fun. G'day Victoria, welcome back. Welcome back, Victoria. Nothing 
wretched nothing gain Still the suits remain the same Doing fine, so I've heard Telling you why did you go To your eyes Reflections in the window saying I told you so I'll bring you back Can't stand the days I wake alone. Can okay, adding a little bit more black to it, a lot of black to it. This is going to give us a dark, muddy, almost greenish yellow tinge. I want to add this in. Was it panting? There we go. Fantastic. Sorry for missing a few comments here, guys. Morning, everyone. <laughs> thanks, Cheryl. Um, I have a revision. Oh, thanks, Fat Boy. Really appreciate that. Um, yeah. You can reach out anytime you like via Instagram or on the website, and we can start the conversation regardless. Um, if you are after a painting, guys, um, obviously, you'll have to wait till next year. Now, um, ironically, you would, but uh, there's availability in January, mid to late January. Um, and we can ship anywhere in the world. We, I can ship anywhere in the world. Um, if you're in New Zealand, it's pretty straightforward. If you're in America, Europe, they go in these protective boxes. Um, I won't bring one out right now, but it'll keep the artwork safe. And um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm here, fair enough, fair enough. Um, yeah, so what you might already start to notice is that the picture's gone from being a little bit pale or lighter in some areas, and it's increasing that yellowy tone. That's what we wanted what we're after. Increasing the yellowy tone without having any effect on the shape and the form of the image. That's what we want. No matter how far we get into the picture, we always have to make sure we're adding paint where we see it, not where we want to see it. As soon as you start thinking, I just want to put a little bit of red over there because it'll make that eye look better. It'll just really finish off that piece. That's when you've hit the worst place to be. That's when, you're, that's when you'll start strangling the art and actually sending it back to the steps. You don't want to play that game. Reflections in the window saying, ah. So, so, we'll bring it back. today's stream. <laughs> if today's stream had a sponsor, um, you want to thank Shelby because we were in bed this morning and Shelby said, right, you know, get up and do some painting, but don't go outside, do it inside, let's give you some antihistamine straight away, let's control the hay fever, but please go do some painting. So that's pretty wholesome. And on top of that, she's vacuuming the house while I paint. So I'm one of the luckiest men on the face of the planet. <clears throat> That's uh, yeah. Hey, thanks, Jason. Happy 2023 to you too. Um. <laughs> thanks, guys. Appreciate that. Um. <clears throat> now, when I come back with the blacks, when we do the blacks on the sort of picture, I can't afford for it to sort of chink over the texture and sort of orange dry brush onto the canvas. So what I'm going to need to do is when I put the blacks on, 
and include a bit of gloss medium into the black. Now the gloss medium is not because I want the black to be glossy, although there will be an effect that will happen, which will be fine. Um, it's because I want the blacks to actually go on top of the current textures. So, we want nice, solid colour. That's what we want. That's what we want. And, you know, at the moment, I like the paint. There's a lot of energy in the paint. I just want to get a bit more, a bit more popping definition in a few little areas. Um, I really like this cheek. I love how these colours through here are incorrect. It sort of shows where his older cheek was when the new one now is. That's fun, that's art, that's why we're a human making art and not a computer. So, uh, 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 um, I did some research, Seb can add mods even when he's not streaming. I'm not sure if he's aware. <laughs> I was not aware, at Victoria. Um, I only saw a little how to video on the creator platform where it goes start the video, go to settings, click name, add. Um, but I will have a look right now. Let me just have a check. If I come into here and go click this and go settings and go moderators and then go add. Um, I wish I could tear moderators too. Like, uh, oh, there we go. Uh, 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 mute. There you go, Victoria. Now you're sorted. Now you're sorted. Thanks, Eddie. Appreciate you, mate. All the best. Happy, uh, happy, happy, happy. 2023. Alright, now, where was that brush that I was talking about? Here we go. But I don't want to get my gloss mixed in with my transparent medium, so. Um, one thing you can run into, guys, is if you're using multiple mediums, you might have the same colour multiple times around the room. So we've got black here with our whites, our yellows. We're going to end up with blacks, whites, and yellows over on this paint palette too, but it's going to be okay because this is the transparent palette, this is the gloss palette. This one for light tones over the top that we want to be able to see through, and this one for bold strokes that we want to make a statement for on the canvas. And if we can be bothered, it's a bit of a clean up, but if we can be bothered, we have a big brush and a small brush on this side, and a big brush and a small brush on this side. Can we see the original photo? Of course you can. Of course you can. And let me just chuck this gloss gel down there. And then I'll grab it for you. I've got another one over here. Reflections in the window saying, ah, totally just so. I think uh, what I might be able to do too, guys. This is the original picture. There he is. And, uh, am I seeing your comments, Cheryl? I, the, the fact that you're asking makes me think, no, I'm missing them. Am I missing them? What was the comment? Um, sorry about that, it was noisy. Uh, sometimes, excuse me, sometimes what happens is it sits there for a moment and then it loads like three comments or four comments at a time. And so I fall a bit behind and that's, my connection more than anything. I wonder if I can put this down. I put this here, and then I move this to here. There you go. Now you can see a little bit of face. And I'll try and keep track of my brushes. Does that work? That's what it works. Um, not sure what TikTok issue was last time. Yeah, and. Um, Sometimes the connection on TikTok is uh, iffy. Um, that's on me though, because I go to bizarre locations and start painting, so understandably, I bring it on myself. Um, <laughs> I could, but I don't see how that help, would help the painting. Okay, here we go. Now with these blacks, we could add on big bold strokes, but I want to capture the smaller bits of black. There's a bit of texture in them, just like this. Where they belong. Key thing with hair, guys, is try not to notice hair. If 
We notice people all the hair all at once. For some reason it always comes out looking silly. We have to notice it tone and shape by tone and shape. And that'll make the hair look correct. Um, ah, that's annoying Barbie tints. You tend to find a lot of them and it's not your fault for the last few days, it's my fault. Um, I've been battling with hay fever um, and losing that battle. So it's a beautiful day out, the sun's shining. Everything you would possibly want to have to paint outside is out there waiting for me. And I am inside because I tried to go outside the last two days and got completely blown over by hay fever. To the point that I'm actually in here now painting and the door is slightly open, but Lucy had the audacity to point out that my eyes were already puffy in this uh, place. TikTok has been weird and I've been getting filtered the last few days. That's real weird. And what's even weirder about that is you're a moderator. So you'd think that uh, it wouldn't filter out, filter, out, filter out the moderator's comments. But it does come up with a comment every now and again. Uh, and thanks, Marcel, really appreciate that. Um, it does come up with a comment every now and again that says, uh, positivity is, is the key to life, Jay. 100%. But, uh, it says some comments have been filtered out. So maybe it's saying that when it grabs your ones or someone else's, I don't know. Um, I do have a serious camp at the moment actually guys, that's true. If you look there, oh, it's gone down now. But I used to have a really, it was, it's, no, it's gone, it's gone. So we're back to normal, we're back to normal. But I had the worst tan line um, the other day. Brought it upon myself. I had the audacity to say Shelby might have had something to do with it because Shelby put sunscreen on my face. And that's why my face isn't burned, but I didn't get any on my. My, my, my. My, my, my. Arms. So, that's where we're at there. Once allergy season comes, it's going to be annoying. Yes. Yes, indeed. It's really annoying for me, guys. The allergies are an absolute disaster. So that's what I battle with. But at least it's a familiar battle. I sort of know what I'm up against. Um, the first few weeks catch me off guard. But then after I sort of start knowing that it's that season again, I can uh, make the correct adjustments. So antihistamine first thing in the morning makes a huge, huge difference. Um, start the day with antihistamines. Rather than take them when you need them, I typically find if I'm preemptive with my behavior, I'm better. I'm better. There we go. Reflections in the window saying, ah, told you so. We'll bring it back. Okay. We'll bring it back. Allergies are the worst. Um. Morning guys, um, I'm gonna come back in just a second. I'm just going to get a refill of my little coffee here. Um, I'll just stand back here though for a moment. Overall, it's coming together really well. I'm sort of liking, yeah, I wanna keep capturing the, uh, I almost feel like when I'm standing close to it here, guys, there's a little bit of a heroic nature to it. And that wasn't his intentions. So it was just meant to be a self-aware, well, it was meant to be a bit, like, it's, I love the picture. It's obnoxiously self-aware. It's self-aware of, oh, what am I trying to say? It's, it's endearingly, it, that's the term I'm looking for, endearingly obnoxious. That's what I like about it. Um, and in the same way, a lot of the paint lands in an, 
with that same sort of vibe, like blue is no business being here, or here, or here, but it's here. It's endearingly obnoxious. Um, I'm gonna come back in just a moment. It is a duck face selfie, it's exactly what it is, and it's fantastic. Um, give me 30 seconds, guys, I'll be right back. Swap the uh, coffee for a stick of salami. Sorry for running away. Um, better than salami though. Very good for you. Barley teams, have fun with your swim. I wonder if you're swimming in salt water or fresh water. These are the questions. Good salami, good salami. Um, Lucy, are you painting at the moment or are you painting over New Year's? Or are you just chilling? I suppose if you're in Australia, painting would be all on for this period. Uh, sorry, not painting. Uh, Australia would be all into it for this period. Thanks, Carl. Mmm. -hmm. Oh, is Lucy hit the track? Hmm. Looks like I'm just talking to myself then. What is this girl now?
ba do 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 why yo ba do 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 why yo ba da ba 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 Thank you so much. It is coming together. I'm pretty happy with this one. Um, third week, tried impressionism. It looks good if you stand 100 feet away. That's a good way to have your impressionism. That's a good way to have it. Does the environment you paint in affect the type of paint you use? Uh, Jason, definitely. Um, if I'm inside, um, acrylics are the best. And if I'm outside, oils are the best. Oils are more fumy, so it's good to get more air or ventilation around your oils. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, so in this environment here, where we haven't got a whole lot of space or ventilation, well, products are the definite winner. And I'm adding a bunch of compounds into them to make sure I get the desired effects that we're after. Um, Robert R. Irwin. Robert Irwin. I'm not sure who that is. I'm not sure who that is. Sorry guys, I'm standing directly in front of it, but I just want to get these tones right through here. Okay, we're going to do something quite wild shortly guys. Something silly. Something fun and silly. I need to get red. So at the moment, ooh, we have a red light. So this is a very, very warm red. So there's no blues in this red. This is full power. Um, is it real red? We could argue about that, but it's my favorite red. That's where we're at. The documentary of Bob Ross was sad. There's a documentary on Bob Ross. I did not realize such things. I'm gonna watch that. Mm. Love the colors. Did the client pick the theme? Uh, no. So the client picked the photo and um, gave me a little bit of an insight into why, but the, uh, the fun thing about it is he just wants it in a wild, fun fashion, like the style that I have does. Um, in terms of actual little guidance on how to paint it, he's left that very open-ended, which is part of the fun. I, I like that because that expresses a... Um, What's the way to put that? It's like an endearing gamble. It's saying, I believe in the artist and I'm willing to gamble off the spectrum of what the artist could produce. Um, and yeah, that's, that's the picture I want you to work from. So let me, let me put down the first stepping stone 
in terms of your journey to making the piece, and then I'll step back and looking forward to seeing what happens. Um, that's quite that's quite daring, quite courageous. It's all the things. What's the story behind the painting, if you don't mind me asking? It is a portrait of a gentleman. Um, he saw me painting, I think it was McKinnon, the Ian picture, and he wanted one for himself. And so thus we are here. And honestly, it's coming together really, really well, and I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So, so keep putting paint on. Keep putting paint where we see it, not where we want to see it. Stroke by stroke, layer by layer. And hopefully, hopefully, we can create some magic. Oh no! Is that about um, Bob Ross? That's tragic. I did not realize. It was his wife who stole his name. Wow. I have no idea. sort of bizarre to be, to be in that situation. Do you think we might make it bigger on this channel and one day Shelby will run off with it? With Bob Ross 2.0. It's possible, it's possible. Beside the painting, uh, so that's the paint beside the painting, but I've got a reference one higher that I'm working off. So you're seeing the uh, one I've got facing you guys, and I've got the exact same one in a slightly different position. You're off now. I hope you have a beautiful day at bedtime. Fair enough. All the best, and thanks for joining in. I will see you on the next fun. The next fun, which hopefully will be tomorrow morning. But guys, this hay fever is running absolutely rampant around the environments that I like to paint in. So we've got this little bit of a battle that's going on, but uh, I think we'll be fine. But as long as you guys can be nice in terms of just bear with me if, I'm, if I've got puffy eyes, if I sniff a little bit, whatever it may be, just bear with me. I need to add more stickers? I will. What sort of stickers do you want to see? I need to flesh that out. And I'll tell you what, that's going to be part of the fun of going in to 2023. So, speaking of guys, if there's anything you guys would like to see, um, or be done, or be part of the 2023 season let me know um hello johnny um johnny i actually just sent you a message on what's that um ian is completely dry and ian's box is basically finished and so this is all very exciting stuff well something but <coughs> bless me sorry guys <coughs> something fun and interactive Random, something fun and random, reactive ones. All right, I'm on it. I'm on it. I will thought tank it tonight and come up with something fun. I promise you that. Why are you mad, Patrick? Can't see my forehead. Don't fully understand, but that's good. That's good. Another small brush, here we go. Here we 
comes. Get a little bit of that magenta in there, a little bit of black into it. Deepen the color a wee bit, just a wee bit. Excuse my sniffing, guys. Just a little, little bit of hay fever coming under the door here. But that's all right. I might grab myself. I'm just gonna grab. My, uh, I've got a little nose thing that'll unblock my nose. I don't want to be sniffing the whole time. It's a SpongeBob quote. Well, there you go. When do you plan on fishing, finishing this piece? Ah, uh, the next few days. So, but I'm gonna like it. You know, these things, like I say, aren't linear. Give me, this should be the second to last coat on this piece. But I wanna see, at the moment, at the moment his eyes come down a little bit here, I wanna see them push up um, as we add a bit more paint. Um, the nose, I wanna see the nose pull out more. That will happen with the lighter tones. Um, I like the color palette. I think the color palette's really fun. I like the brush strokes. I think they're fun. I think I want to see form come out some more. I want to see more form. I want to see more shape. And then I believe we'll be in a position to say it's done. But yeah. Um. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, all right, give me just a moment. I'm going to grab the uh, nose thing. Uno momento. I'm still going to be sniffly, but at least it'll hopefully slow down, so we'll see how we go on. <clears throat> I'm surprised you're able to say a few phrases. Uh, my Spanish is tiny. Tiny. So, please don't test my Spanish. It's shocking. I used to know a little more Spanish, but that was just by the app Duolingo. So, as soon as you stop, you forget so much of it. That's the challenge. All right, adding this magenta in. <clears throat> Trying not to sniff because it's so rude, but struggling, obviously. It is very, very hot at the moment, guys. Man, it's hot in this room. It's the uh, Mm-hmm. 
Does he speak with a British accent? No, this is a Kiwi accent and this is acrylics. So I'm a Kiwi, Kiwi accent, using acrylic paints. And my acrylic paints because I'm painting inside. So. So. That's the full explanation. Kiwi painter, we're in total at the moment, but Sometimes we're painting, or most of the time now, we're painting in Auckland. I've moved to Auckland. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, and typically, this one's talking about the picture and saying when it um, filming the guy when he gets it. A lot of the time with these commissions, people who have them watch the process or catch it on YouTube. So he'll already know largely what the painting looks like, which is pretty fun. So this man here has likely been watching it come together from start to finish. Um, which I find pretty fun. Um, hello everyone, how are you today? I'm good, thank you Jacko, hope you're well. Uh, maybe you should paint Destiny. I don't know who Destiny is, but we could do. Kiwi? Kiwi. G'day Two Star Drought. Welcome. Right. <clears throat> Making steps. What do they call New Zealanders? Why do they call New Zealanders Kiwis? So Kiwi is the name of our national bird. It's a small, very cute, flightless bird. And Kiwi is also the name of our famous fruit, Kiwi fruit. If you're in Europe, you've seen Kiwi fruit from New Zealand. That Kiwi fruit that you find in your dairies, supermarkets, etc., um, that says it's from New Zealand is actually Likely made less than an hour from where I'm currently painting. So I live very close to some of the biggest orchards in New Zealand. Bay of Plenty is known for its kiwi fruit production. And I always find it funny, like when I was over in Europe earlier this year, the amount of places selling kiwi fruit, it's all from New Zealand, and I'm like, this kiwi fruit's come such a long way, and it's so funny to be so far overseas. And you have something which is literally made down the street from my house here. That's always funny. Hey, thanks very much, Mick. Appreciate that. This explains the name for the kiwi bird as well. Yes, so it all started with the kiwi bird. The kiwi bird was the uh, patient one. So there's the kiwi bird, the kiwi fruit, and then the kiwis who are us. All after the same thing. Pretty fun. Okay, here we go. Let me say it, guys, I'll say it again. We're only adding paint where we see it. We're not going around it with any sort of a system. So I'm not trying to add paint to one corner then to another corner and then to build up the composition. The composition is almost completely forgotten about in favor of just noticing where these shapes and colors might go. I would completely, completely obliterate composition in favor of having the colors and strokes within the composition landing in the right places. And if you get that, ironically, the composition can't help but to come together. But you've got to start with tones, shapes, and strokes, and let the composition come from that. Don't start with a composition and try and add tone, shapes, and strokes to it. Or at least for my style and the way I paint, I find that going my, 
my direction helps the most. You may find for your style, whatever that may be, that you actually find it easier to come from another direction. But for me, for me personally, I've always found that to make the painting special, first focus on the strokes, first focus on the tones, first focus on the shapes that you can see and let a face come from that. So there's, you could probably argue because of that, there might be a lack of balance to the pictures I make. But at the same time, if the whole picture is chaos, isn't that in itself, excuse me, isn't that in itself balance? <laughs> Thanks, Johnny. Appreciate the crowd. Um, if I put chaos into one corner of it, or chaos into a line of it, but the rest had order, um, or I'd create a composition and try to incorporate a little bit of chaos, that would have a lack of balance to it. But the fact that the whole thing is chaos, I think that creates balance. Uh, yeah, no violet today. Um, Pinned a comment, what do you base your color choices on? Rick. My color choices are the process, of, the process of choosing colors once I've started is very much an instinctual process. So I'm looking at the tubes of paint that I've got, I'm looking at what I believe the picture might need, and uh, sometimes even the brush size that I'm using, and I let those three things come together in a way that I choose, all right, this color next, that color next. Um, <clears throat> But I, oh, that was a good stroke, guys. That was a, that was a fun stroke to add to the picture. Um, but typically, there's no paint by numbers to it. So it's, it's, all very, it's all very wild. It's the wild west when it comes to choosing colors. And it's also the wild west in how we apply them. I do have a little bit of a tactic where I'll start with a big brush and violet should be a sticker. That's actually, Matt, that's the sort of creative thinking that we need around here. We're gonna add in a violet sticker. I like that. Probably a few violet stickers. I don't know what the max amount of stickers I'm allowed is, but uh, if it's a lot, I will add in a lot of violet stickers. Painting violet with a paintbrush. <laughs> yeah, so if you were here for the other uh, stream when I was uh, out, in Auckland there, I accidentally got paint on my horse and Shelby tried to help me remove it and we made it worse and anyway, Wendy, the mother, who owned the horse was really, really good about it. She didn't have to be, but she was and I appreciated that. So that horse will still, still have a uh, blue face because that wasn't regular paint guys that was oil paint so that's going nowhere for a while pardon me this white isn't working out too good for me, guys. It's a tinting white, and so it's less powerful. I want some titanium white. Do we have some titanium white in the building? That's the question. Tinting white, or titanium. Tinting white, that's all tinting white. That's annoying. Oh, hello. Um, this one's more of a, yeah, this one's got more of a kick to it. It'll be all right. I went to school with you. Cool stuff to see what you're doing. Keep it up. Cheers, Chris. Um, Tower and Boys College, I suppose. <laughs> that was a good time. Um, Tower and Boys College, which is obviously a school in Totoma, was a cool school to go to. I was... Not ever a cool kid, but 
I had a great group of friends. We had the most incredible little art department there with like a little coffee machine with a toasted sandwich maker and me and a very good friend called Brody used to, uh, yeah, make out in that department and Tom Hill. And we used to, we actually started our own sculpture class in seven form. So we realized that in NCEA, which is the qualification you get here in New Zealand at high school, we decided that uh, sculpture was a class. So we started one up and the three of us did it. And that was really fun. We had a teacher who actually knew how to teach sculpture, which was the reason why we got it across the line because we were just kids. But uh, she was really cool. Miss Dugmore, she was a larper which means that she dressed up in medieval outfits and uh, um, reenacted sword fights. Um, thanks, Rick. Appreciate that. You should get a studio dog. I would love to get a studio dog. Um, that would be really fun, actually. I'd have to make sure it was like a little bit more sensible, though, because it couldn't eat the paint. That would be... I'd get in trouble about that. But... Uh, Having a little dog hanging around the studio would be pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, also, guys, if you are enjoying yourself, you're welcome to follow um, or jump on my Instagram. The Instagram is in the bio, and there's also a website there. You can jump on any one of those. And yeah. I'm sorry for the lack of reels. I've been, at the moment with the current season, I've been prioritizing going live with you guys over actually making reels. But um, there's some really cool questions there that people have asked, that that have asked, that I need to come back to. But uh, in terms of doing funky reels as replies, but uh, in good time, in good time. Up here, here we go. Building it up layer by layer. This is a tinting white. Now a tinting white is very similar to a regular white. It's just not as strong. It's a little bit weaker. Um, a little bit more transparent so you can add, well, tints. You should typically mix a tinting white with another color. So that way it can tint the color. Um, and we're adding to yellow. So it's this really, really soft cream color. And that's what we're after here. As soon as you realize a stroke you're putting down is in the wrong place, don't continue with it. Just move on. The best way to get rid of that stroke, or the best way to correct a happy little mistake, as Bob Ross would put it, is with 20 not mistakes. Take that advice into life as well, I reckon. Best way to correct a mistake in life is not to focus on a mistake, it's to make 20 not mistakes. I'm sorry I'm not using a better term for it, but I think that's a really good way of describing it. Ah, thank you very much. Is that Eva? Eva, or a long name. Sorry, user. Um, user, Jack. What are we saying? I missed it. I'm trying to come in and out, but I missed a few things. Um, uh, what do you think? I'm an architect student and can draw and paint. Because if you, oh, what do you think? I'm an architect student and can't draw and paint because we draw on a computer. There's nothing wrong with that. And in fact, because architects now have the advantage of a computer, there's more of a spectrum to actually uh, um, to engage in that practice because if you can't draw and paint, you know, maybe you can or maybe you've got a blockage there, but you can use the computer then to then create beautiful things. So have a think about the, um, like I've got a lot of friends who went to art school with me who then actually don't do art on um, canvases or on paper, 
all their art goes on a computer. They make it with those little tablets and they draw via that. And that wasn't because they couldn't do the art. They just didn't like the practical mixing of colors. See, I love using physical colors and mixing. But for them, they liked applying the colors, but not the practical mixing of the colors. Which color do you run out of the most? Um, tones. You'll run out of black and white the most. And the reason they'll run out the most is you'll use um, black and white to mix into all your other colors. So, typically, buy more black and white than any other color. And you'll be away. Your style though, you may gravitate more towards one of the primary colors. And for me, if I was going to gravitate more towards a color, it would be red or blue. I always end up with more yellows than any other color in my arsenal, which there's nothing wrong with that. I just end up with too many yellows. Um, and that's typically too because I don't actually use acrylic yellow very often at all. I always default back to the more bold colors. And then when it comes to adding yellow, I use oils. So acrylic yellow is always overstacked for me. Always overstacked. Thank you very much. Is that Evan, Evan Darson? Evan, I think I'm, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, Evan. I'm really sorry. And Nanu? <laughs> Thanks, Victoria. Um, everyone, Victoria's here. She's a lovely... She was supposed to be a moderator half a week ago, but I couldn't get my technology to work right, and that was on me. But now she's here. Doing... All the stuff that we're lucky to have her here for. There we go. Again, these are just the tinting whites, guys. They're not strong colours, but they Little pop. A lot of texture here, a lot of texture, a lot of fun. Um, g'day guys, I'm very good. Thank you very much. I hope you're doing well as well. I do paint left-handed, so um, this is, I think sometimes the stream, or the whole time, the stream is reversed. Um, so, there's that. But yes, I'm left-handed. You do a very good job to pick that out, guys, because obviously, if the stream's reversed, for you to pick up on that, you're, you're quite perceptive. Um, hmm. <laughs> Is it a tan line on my legs? Um, oh, no, no, it's not a tan line on my legs. It's the light from, I've got the garage door, but not the whole way up, so I'm in my legs, see? So, the garage door's half up to bring some light into the room, but not the whole way up like usual, because I'm trying to keep the pollen outside so I don't start sneezing. So, there's a master play taking place here. You're Brazilian. You're Brazilian. You speaking say my name. Evan Dersen. Dersen? Evan Dersen? Evan? I'm... I hope I'm getting close, but I think maybe I'm getting further away. Well, today you've had good signal. Yes, I do have good signal today, which is fantastic. I haven't had good signal on all the days. This day is more... In fact, we've had bad signal more than we've had good signal. So today is unique that we're now running off good signal. Okay, there we go. And now we're going into these tinting whites up here on the forehead. I don't want to lose that blue, but I can't concentrate on that. I just have to keep on adding colours where I think they go, wherever that might be. Um, did Cheryl leave, guys? I didn't miss her goodbye. I didn't see her goodbye. I was a little bit gutted there, but anyway. 
I do start painting and ignore the screen and then go backwards and forwards and if I do ignore the screen for a bit, people miss out and some people say goodbye and I'm sorry for missing that, but uh, especially around the years because I want to wish, especially the people who moderate because you're all incredible, happy new years. Um, you haven't used wholesome much today, I miss it. Oh, I'm sorry Matt, you're 100% right. <laughs> yeah, so for those of you who don't know, Matt's correct. I use the word wholesome an extravagant amount of times. Way too often, completely abuse that word. Why? I like the word, but I think Matt, my friends and family have been having me on for too much use, and so I'm much more conscious about the word wholesome. So I've probably been, uh, Toning back. Which isn't a bad thing, I don't think. I, I like to use as, not as many words as possible, but actually get creative with the language that I use. I'm not a big fan of just bashing some words more than others. Sorry guys, just gonna sneak up here, get some paint up in this corner. It's not a neglected corner, it's looking pretty cool, but I wanna make sure that I do spend some time up here because, especially with this transparent stuff, just extra, extra textures building up. Don't ignore the corners of your artwork, keep the paint going up into it, there we go. I'm looking forward to watching this uh, Bob Ross documentary though, guys, because it's interesting. First off, the header is one in the first instance, but uh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. First time yellow's touched over this side, that's exciting. It's probably just a little bit saturated, but that's all right. We're gonna add a bit more of this black to it to tone it back some. Add it through there. And just over here is another part there. There we go. Looking good, looking good. Right, who did I miss? Every artist should watch it, yes indeed. I will, I promise, I'm sorry for delaying on that. Um, was that Justin? Justin, welcome. Um, the tan line is not a tan line, it's incorrect. That's actually the, uh, yeah, I should probably actually wind the window down to avoid that, but um, it's letting in some light from outside. But yeah, good question, is it on Netflix? Um, and that's a chicken. There is an animal kingdom in the backyard. Um, just tolerate the weird tan line on the legs just because um, I want to keep that door up a little bit so I get a little bit more light in here. Um, you almost got my name right. Very good. It's a little complicated. Well, yeah, I got close. Uh, yeah, but you can be forgiven for that though, Justin, because it does look very silly. So it is what it is. Um, why would someone choose a photo like that? Um, look, I like it. I really like it. Um, the fact that you're asking that and it's getting a reaction, um, not a negative reaction, just a what, is sort of fun. Um, I like the picture, I like the guy's style. Imagine if you had all the pictures you want in the world, it's good, it's a good looking guy. He can do whatever he wants and he chose this photo. Like, uh, I think that's actually, as far as it goes, I think that's pretty fun. I was, uh, when he sent it to me, I think he's, I can't, I can't remember now. Let me go back and have a look. I think he sent me a few photos, or he sent me this one, and I cropped it slightly. So I think he had more of a background in it. I said, no, 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 let's bring it. Let's really bring it forward. Um, but I like his style because it's just, <laughs> it's the sort of thing where 
so many people go for portraits, which are conceivably maybe just a wee bit mundane. This is not a mundane portrait. This is this is a high energy portrait. It's what I said before. It's admiringly obnoxious. I like that. I like that. I like the style. I think uh, another thing with it is I don't like I don't think a lot of people have the balls to ask for a portrait like this. So good on him. Um, it's kind of iconic at this point. It is becoming slightly iconic. I dig it. I dig it. Why people want to have tan skin? Every skin is perfect. Uh, let every person do their own things. Not only can you like what you've currently got, you can want whatever you want. Um, good for you. Like the fake smile portraits or something? Yeah, I think a lot of people try and when they get a portrait, since it's a one-shot thing, they go for something quite mundane and almost treat it like a Facebook picture whereby you've got a straightforward smile or standard look on your face. And the reality of it is that's not the lives that we live or what we do. Um, what we do with our faces or I don't think a single shot could probably capture all the essence of you. But you know what? Very infrequently do you want to capture this sort of side of yourself. Um, and that's really fun. Really fun. Really endearing. Um, you know what? I'll use the word really wholesome. Because um, uh, this guy, like I say, has got the opportunity to make himself look like a hero. And apparently he does look like a bit of a hero. But um, he didn't want to go for a straightforward, symmetrical, perfect face. And that endeared him to me a lot. I think that's really cool. Um, you have the exact same shirt? Yeah, I love this shirt. <laughs> I've actually overworn it. Definitely. Um, so this is... This is... We're in Aotearoa. This is Tauranga. Tauranga. Where kiwi fruit come from? We're gonna pause on this one for a little bit, guys. We're gonna let that paint dry. That's not the complete layer, but it's getting closer. We're getting pretty happy with this one. We might come back with. I know I said I wouldn't, but probably a little bit of oils. But we'll see. We'll see. What I do with it now is I put it in the corner of the studio have a look at it for a while and just see how I feel about it. Um, up close, from a distance, um, I want to grow this cheek out a little bit more. Um, I want to get a bit more orange in here. I think what will happen is we'll come back with a transparent orange. I think that will be the next step. But, you never know. Let's put it in the corner. And I'll look at it a few times and decide how I feel. Kill, kill, kill. Kill, 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 kill. Kill, kill, kill. Kill, 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 kill. The eyes are about right. I think I want to put some more. Yeah, I don't know. I really like it. I really like it. So we'll give it some time, but yeah, we'll see. Do you name the paintings? I do name the paintings, but only for archival purposes. So the pictures just get the very standard names. So um, that one will leave, I'm not sure what that one will be called just yet, but just so if you Google it or if you uh, are looking on the website and you search for it, it's just like, this is just called Three Kids at the Beach. So that way, that way, it's easy for you to find at a later date. And I like that. So this one here is the most juvenile of all paintings. When I say juvenile, it's the it's not very far along. But that's because we've been changing the shape of it a lot. We've had to drag things around, and that's why a lot of the strokes are really messy. But um, we'll continue on that vein, see where it takes us. Uh, this layer here, since I've got all these warm colours, we'll just keep adding warmth to it. Just keep adding the warmth. Give me a moment, guys, though. I need to go to the bathroom, and then I will come back and continue painting with you. <laughs> You're more than welcome, guys. Um, can you get a close-up of the man? Um, I'll give you a close-up of that, guys. Here, come with me. It's just over here. So, 
bring over into this corner. Sorry about that picture being upside down. Um, Cowboy, he's got to get shipped shortly. And then we got Ian here. Ian is now dry. This is the drying corner. Um, and then we have uh, the picture here. So if we come in close, if I just bring you down here, bring you in right there close. I'll take you off the stand actually, guys. Come here. So if we come in right near close, you'll see the strokes are actually really, really messy over the surface. This is what we want. We want when you come close, really close, you don't see um, structure. We don't want to see an iron here anymore. What we want to see is paint strokes, like these greens, these magentas just being paint. It's not the best lighting to show it often, but it wants to just be traumatically messy up close. And then when we come back, we want a face to start to appear. So it's, um, it's realism from a long way away, but up close, it's very abstract. It's very expressive. That's where the impressionism style comes from. That's what we're after. So when we come up close, and that's, that's a big part of the judgment on it. When we come close to it, does it just look like paint? Primal paint being wild. And if that's the case, we're hitting the nail on the head. That's where we want to be. Um, yeah. And it's really important too, when you're doing the picture and you start getting closer and closer to it, you can start over-focusing on smaller details that you think are relevant. And that will take away from the paint being paint. It's, um, let a photo be accurate. You just have fun with it. Um, how do I know what colours? A lot of it is instinctual. But the cool thing about painting is you get to pick what colours. It's all up to you. Whatever you feel like, you can choose. Um, let me just go to the bathroom. I will come on back. And then we're hitting this one with this palette. So, a lot of warm colours. And with this picture, I'll just put a picture up for you so you can see it. With this picture, there are very, very few warm colours. It's actually a grey, a blue sort of background. And that's why, that's why we want to add them in. So when we start doing the detail later on, these undertones of warmth will come through. So we're at, all right, I will be back. I will be back.
Ah. Sorry for running away, guys. I just had to uh, splash some water on my face too because I was trying to get the uh, the, the pollen out of my eyes. We're inside, but the uh, sliding door is slightly up. It's that thing you see there. Um, so my face is wet for that reason, but it gets it out of my eyes so I can see straight. So that's helpful. First time of seeing you, never seen paintings like yours. Pretty sweet. Hey, thanks mate, appreciate that. Um, right, let's add, voila, there's our big fat brush and in this bottle here, this is a water. If you've been to BP recently, you'll see they've got these new plastic bottles, um, which apparently are reusable. I like them because they've got a big fat end on them, so pretty helpful. Mmm. Ah, stay hydrated. So healthy. So healthy. What's our time at? 12.35 by 11.35. Don't you put like seven layers on a painting? I do, Justin. And this one here is just starting to reach a stage now, which is a pretty fun stage to be at, which means it's just starting to take the form that we want it to be. And so it needed some serious adjustments and now it's got there in a way that when we start landing paint, this might be in the final layer. But I want to make sure this one's actually, this one wants to be real hot. I like this painting. I like the kids. I like the, uh, I want to get the composition of it correct. I want this energy in the sea, in the mount. I want to capture that. I really want it. And so, What's in the sea? Well, a whole lot of blues, blacks, greys, and whites. What are we gonna add to it? Reds, greens, purples, blues, browns, magentas, all the fun stuff. And then at the end, we'll give a slight overcoat of those, uh, the blues and the browns and the greys. But I wanna make sure that we get all those funky colors captured in those waves, that's what we want. That's what we want. Um, where are we at? He circles through them so they can dry. Yes, indeed, thank you very much. And cheers for the Kiwi. Johnny, you're an absolute champion. I think the, uh, I'm not sure what other countries get, but I like the fact that New Zealand's got a Kiwi. Is our thing, I think the Kiwi's fine. All right, adding these colors to B. So you can see this picture become very, very saturated with warp. Will we tone it back? Yeah, we will. But uh, for the starters, we want to capture it. And we're not being too fussy on the brush strokes. Stops there, it's too high. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. There we go. We're gonna finish off these colours one by one. I think I'm gonna move you around this way a little bit too, guys, because I get the feeling that from where I'm painted from at the moment, I'm actually blocking you most of the time. So let me move you around here. Let me get this out of your way. Because I think that'll give you a better angle, so I'm not standing in your way the whole time. Um, can we profile? I really like it all. Oh my god, the last video is my favorite. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I can't remember what the last one is. Um, and I should be making some more reels, sorry guys, but I've been prioritizing going live at the moment, so well, we're coming up on New Year's and things. So if there's less reels and more lives, I think, I think as a group, I think that's more fun. That's where we're at at the moment. Um, <clears throat> just gonna say, gonna say, gonna say, what brand are those shoes? You like them, Justin. These shoes are, but I've been boom, boom, all birds, and I got them from an off shop. So I love finding brands in off shops, and the reason I like that is I can buy from the brand, have the nice clothes, have it for cheap, 
and also look after the environment in a sustainable way. So I get to hit all the birds with one stone and I like that. Plus, all birds are already, <laughs> yeah, hit all the birds with one stone, it's funny actually. Um, all birds are an environmentally conscious brand, so I understand anyway. But uh, the reason why I like, but they're even more environmentally conscious because they're second hand all birds, right? That's the way that works. How's your artwork going? It's going good. Um, I think I've got some guests arriving up here for New Year's, so I might have to dash, if that is them, I might have to dash away to entertain guys, but um, I will be back tomorrow morning. Obviously, obviously, on New Year's Day, because I want to stream on New Year's Day, I think that's fun, but we'll see. Oh, it is, it is indeed, guys. How was your Christmas, Justin? Christmas was good. Christmas was so good. Um, had a good one. Everyone was happy. Everyone was friendly. Everyone got along. All the things. All the things. Right. Remember, we're adding paint when we see it, not when we think it should go. Big difference. Big difference. Enjoy the New Year's Eve. Bye. Oh, Matt, we'll catch you later. Um, thanks for popping in. Um, and I will enjoy New Year's Eve. And hopefully, I'll see you tomorrow. We'll see. Victoria, I will see you tomorrow. It'll be in the morning because, um, yeah, it just will be in the morning. Because that's less risk as well with my hay fever. If it's in the morning, it's less likely to pollen everywhere. And so I can... Uh, yeah, look after myself. Oh my god, there's a different painting. Where are you doing with the guy? Oh, he's just back there. So he's not finished, but rather than just throwing paint at the canvas non-stop, we want to pause. And when we pause, it allows us to look at it, understand it better, and come back to it with the right colours and the right shapes to, you know, finish it off in the right way. Um, JMS, welcome. Um, JMS, I sent you a message. I think um, this morning so we're in good shape and hopefully actually JMS it'll be your one that we start on New Year's Day so first landscapes painting on the string and New Year's Day painting double special do you have fever I don't have a fever but I do get hay fever so if you look at my eyes they'll be puffy and that's why I keep running off every now and again to splash water on my face to try and freshen up um, what time do you think you'll be on stream? Because it's almost 5 p.m. for me, and time zones are weird. Uh, I think, probably, put me down for an 8 a.m. 8 a.m., or 7, not, not a 7 a.m., put me down definitely by 8 a.m., but like, I could be on just a little bit earlier, but that's where it should be. Hello from Brazil. Allergies are terrible, Jason. They are rough as they get. Um, and this time of season is not good for your boy. It's the worst, so I battle when I battle, but um, I, like I manage, but like, it's not because winter's a better season, I just prefer winter because I don't have the allergies, um, and that's a silly reason, because summer's great, but uh, look, if every time you go outside you start sneezing and your nose blocks up and all that sort of stuff, you can sympathise to why I would gravitate towards a season that doesn't do that. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm just gonna add this color in, wild and woolly. So, like I said at the start, guys, we're adding these colors in a way that we're gonna make these undertones, these warm tones, oh, that. It's gonna make undertones of warmth coming through. That's what we want. Don't want this painting to turn cold. The painting has a lot of steely colors in it. Yep, that's cool, good for you painting, but we want to have an undertone of warmth in it. 
And uh, we're gonna get that by starting with these fiery colors, first and foremost. That's what we wanna do. That's what we are doing. And the scale of things, the proportions of things, are in a good place. If you remember this painting at the start, it looked great, but they haven't always been as close to as spot on as we may have wanted them. So it's cool to make some cool steps. Now, yeah. in the right direction. Um, those friends did arrive, but Shelby's grabbed them and she's talking to them. So I've got a little bit more time to seize up the last bit of this paint. Is this man single before I fall in love with it? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I am taken. In fact, the lady I was talking about entertaining guests is Shelby, my partner, who is, um, yeah, doing a great job actually, because this is actually um, not even her house, but she's entertaining guests because her partner has the audacity to be painting. So, let me have a look see here. I can hear a dingy in the background, it's fun. Right, right, a little bit more of these browns in here, guys. Let's see where it takes us. Up around here. Like I was saying, we want to get as much warmth and energy into the thing. It's three kids. Three kids means we can't just paint blues and steely greys. We need to get life into it. Because kids innately have a huge amount of energy. And so to really capture that, I need to make sure I capture as much warmth and vibrancy as possible. Because that's children for you. Or at least that's children in my eyes. So if you want to paint any kids from me, expect, expect energy, vibrancy, movement, um, expressive strokes, the whole shooting box, the whole shooting box, there we go, and over here on the arm, down here, perfect. Now we're going on to the last colour of our collection, this is magenta, haven't touched this one yet, but this is going to really pop, this is going to be more poppy than all the other colours. Magenta, from straight from the tube, look at that. That colour there is bonkers. It's like a, it's like a evolved version of hot pink. Um, <laughs> thanks, Victoria. What she said, one hundred percent. She is one hundred percent right. Um, give me just a moment. Oh, here we go. And now we're gonna use magenta everywhere we see dark grey. That's a really good match for magenta. If you're wondering why dark grey always looks poor on your canvas, try and swap it out for magenta. You'll have some fun. Um, magenta can also look really silly. Um, so, I'm not saying don't use it, but realize what you're getting yourself into, you know? Sometimes it'll hit the mark, and sometimes it'll ruin a canvas. But, honestly, a color like that, I find really fun. I like the risk of a color like that. So everywhere, I say, everywhere we see dark grey, we're adding the magenta in. Now later on, in later sets, we will come back and we'll actually add in those dark greys, but they'll be added on as a, uh, what's the term I can put it? They'll be added on as a um, transparent coat. So you'll get the colour that it's supposed to be, but the actual shape and form of it we made up with the magenta. And we'll see what we get to that. We might, like, again, it's a painting. It's not linear. It might change your mind. But at the moment, I'm liking that as a game plan. I think it's a good game plan. Yeah, that stroke was in the wrong place. But that's okay. You heard me say it, guys. The best way to get these strokes back in the right place is to ignore the stroke we just made and make 20 strokes in the right place. Right, look at this. We got the black, I'm mixing the black with the last of the sienna. And that's gonna give us this muddy, muddy, almost greenish yellow. I'm gonna grab as much of that uh, transparent medium as possible. And that's our color. Messy. 
It's been very chill so far. Sid plans on going live again tomorrow morning. Yes, he does. Um, I might be down at the beach today, but it won't be live. It'll be hanging out with some friends. Um, I'm just going to add the last of this muddy yellow onto this canvas, and then I'll have to dash. But this is a fun color because it's using the last the color on our tray. And because it's the last color we're using, we're going to add it on super thick. Super thick's good because it covers the texture of our canvas. There we go. That's fun. A little bit around here. This is the perfect color for shadows. Don't fall into the trap of thinking shadows have to be black and white either. I think I do it as well. I start thinking, oh, it's a shadow. Where's my black? Where's my gray? Shadows are never black or grey. Shadows are always cast onto another surface. So there's actually always vibrancy and colours in the shadows. So these shadows, we're going to capture these ones with this deep dark oxide colour, which will be fun. It's like a, it's, about, it's actually a similar hue, similar hue, uh, not hue, tone. Completely different hue, but similar tone to the magenta that we just played with. Almost there, there we go. More on the spot here. There's very little definition on these feet at the moment. They're a bit of a mess, but in a good way. Here we go. Well, I don't know about you guys, from your where you're sitting, but I think this painting's improved tenfold with the wildness of colour that we just added to it. It was looking plain before, right? I don't know if you're in the same boat as me. It was plain before. Now it's going better. Hey from New Zealand. Hey Cheryl. Um, not ignoring you, just trying to get this paint on right. I'm just, I'm just probably a little bit over enthusiastic at the moment. You have to excuse that because this is actually landing in all the ways I wanted it to. This is I don't want to get too cocky because, you know, that's when you make mistakes, but this is actually exactly, exactly what we wanted from this paint. This is spot on. And you're going to say, it looks like a mess. Yes, it does look like a mess. But you know what? The colour and the vibe that's come from it, oh, that's pretty cool. That's what we were after. So we're going to keep motoring through that, keep seeing if we can keep indulging that. There we go. Important thing too guys is don't see a separation between the background and the foreground. So if you're putting colours in the background, try and spot them in the foreground and vice versa. Otherwise it'll look like your characters are sort of stuck floating with the background as a disconnection. And if you don't put as much time into the background, they'll look even more disconnected and silly. So, I find try and keep that continuity between the two of them for a better outcome overall. Here we go, just down like that. Just down like that. Just like that, there we go. Right, that's us team. There is more paint here. Check that out, there is much more paint there. But we don't want to add it, we want to hold back on that. And the reason we want to hold back on that is once you've added the amount of paint you want to have in it, stop. Um, because you'll only stand to turn it more into porridge. So um, that's that's the right amount of color there. You'll notice we left here a lot. That's because actually this area here didn't have those darker tones in it. So they're not spread equally. They're spread over the characters and then in the sky and the streaks in the background where the uh, reflection hits right. It's acrylics at the moment. But um, when we do a bit more detail on it, with a few more layers, we might come back with some oils. We'll see. We will see. Um, <laughs> thanks, Johnny. Appreciate that. Um, uh, what made you think of using magenta? Look, I love magenta. Um, hot pink can get lost in a picture a little bit. And uh, it had, hot pink is a really hard time competing with things like uh, saturated blues and oranges. But when you add on uh, magenta, Magenta is like hot paint on steroids and then it just comes in there and um, I mean very hard to miss where the magenta has gone. You can see streaks of it and you can see it around these faces and a little bit down here. It keeps its power and even once all the colours are on there screaming out in vibrancy, 
magenta will still sit there and say, I'm here and I'm representing this color. So, um, but <clears throat> mainly the reason why I ended up on this canvas was we already have magenta on our color palette. So happy little mistake, happy little coincidence. Um, I just realized that it's already Friday in New Zealand, Thursday still here in Mexico. Eddie, wild. Um, yeah, so tomorrow's New Year's Day here in New Zealand. Um, today, that'll be enough painting, but uh, tomorrow I'll leap on and with a bit of luck, finish a few canvases. We'll see, we'll see how New Year's goes. Depends on the paint lands. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so <clears throat> it's actually 12 o'clock, so the heat of sun here in New Zealand. The heat of sun. So, I wish you all the very best for, well, Merry Christmas, and I'll see you on New Year's with a bit of luck, but otherwise, Happy New Year's, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you to everyone to join, who, that I've at, who joined. It's been really fun. Um, we made some really good ground. That color on this, spot on. That face, I can see it in the reflection of the live. It's getting really, really close. Those eyes are popping. The mouth's quite accurate. I love the asymmetry to it. It's all really fun. <laughs> but apart from that, love you all. All hope you have an amazing day. And yep, Cheryl, I'll catch you later. All the best, guys. Bye.